Hi. We're going to be discovering why I found my carving of the Sphinx dissatisfying. Not the way it is there, but the way it was. And I'll explain. When I finished carving this woman out of wood, it wasn't like this. Okay, this is the way I love it. But it wasn't like this. It was just bare. So basically it was just a wooden female nude. Whoopee. <laughs> you know, like in the in the world of art, that is not a very exciting thing. So many people have done nudes of women and they've done it so much better than me. <laughs> so I have nothing, nothing at all to be proud of carving a figure like this in the first place. It left me absolutely dissatisfied and I felt something was wrong. It did nothing for me and that's a bad sign. It did not feel, I did not feel the usual catharsis which comes after completing a difficult and prolonged artistic project. I kept staring at it for days, weeks, and even months afterward, waiting for a revelation from it, but none came. In its present boring form, it was a failure. I knew that any artist of medium talent could carve a nude out of relatively soft wood. It was nothing but a kneeling naked lady who looked bored as much as she was boring. I had to admit that. We all have to admit it when we're not really, we haven't done a really good job, okay? There was no lightning to her. There was no horror. There was no threat. She didn't come alive. She didn't have something to stir or to upset the apple cart, as they say, you know. A real sphinx would have been monstrous, would have been diabolical, would have, would have felt threatening, but she didn't. There was no anxiousness in her, as a monster would be chomping at the bit to catch its next victim, for instance. There was nothing at all. It was an empty vessel. I had botched the whole thing because I had not thought it out long or deep enough. I grew ashamed of myself for having spent so much time and effort to come up with a stud. Problem lay in the fact I had not spent as much time and effort on my research. I had not insinuated her gross personality into me that I might begin to understand her monstrous nature. The Sphinx symbolized pure hate after all. She hated everyone's beauty because she was so ugly. She hated her own existence because it was meaningless. She hated herself. I put her away and forgot her in a closet for 20 years. I did not believe there was a chance in a lifetime I could resurrect her to a fine work of art. I imagined that at some point I would find a way to burn her in a metal barrel get rid of her. So I forgot her completely and spent the next 20, 25 years creating a substantial work of art uh, complete with good sales and exhibitions. I did not think about the Sphinx till just before I left Greece for Canada once again. 2011. Since I was entertaining the idea of returning to Canada after 20 years in Greece, I went through my closets and storage areas to clear them out. Sure enough, there was the Sphinx, buried under forgotten rubble and assorted items, ready for the waste bin. I thought, now would be the right time to burn the damn thing and get it over with. I was certainly not going to lug a failure to Canada. I kept staring at it again, sort of giving it one last benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I thought, just because I couldn't solve its problem so many years ago, when I was still green around the ears, actually, didn't mean a more experienced ma me couldn't solve it now. Why don't I give it a try? 
So because I was much more mature 20 years later, 25 years later, I had my own school of art for nine years, then working for the National Theater of Greece for another eight years. There was a lot to be said about all the exhibitions I had had and all the sales I had made. I thought perhaps I could give it more try, one more try and with my newfound experience, maybe could solve this seemingly insurmountable problem. I felt that this time I stood a better chance at finding a solution to the problem of the Sphinx. Little did I know that destiny had already solved the problem for me. Yes, this was amazing. That was amazing. The answer came from the mechanical political painting of Protocosmo I had spent a year creating. In this painting, I used collage photographs of machines cut out and glued onto the painting, becoming part of the whole. It was a new experiment I had worked on, sending me in a total new direction. I reveled in making this art form, and it occurred to me that perhaps I could incorporate the idea of machine parts to the Sphinx. At first, it seemed ludicrous, but it soon caught on. I had to think outside of the box, like the Greeks. As soon as the idea popped in my head, I was hooked. I pursued this idea almost anxiously and with great energy, fervor, and resolve. I took a chainsaw and started hacking this poor wooden sculpture to pieces. Then I visited a junkyard on the outskirts of Athens and collected many assorted mechanical parts of discarded and disemboweled machines. Can you imagine me out there in those fields of decaying and rusted metal monsters, picking up parts, picking them apart, selecting parts for my own sculpture? I was, I was doing it and I couldn't believe I was doing it. I said, what am I doing here? Anyway, I collected a whole bunch of things. I started cleaning them. I assembled all these parts into the sculpture, creating an unbelievable sphinx like no one had ever seen before. I experienced catharsis repeatedly, immediately upon finishing the piece. This was a good sign. The piece had completed itself. The process of having waited for 20 years to resolve an insurmountable problem made me a believer in destiny. It was the destiny of this work of art and my efforts to make it happen that made me a believer that this thing was always meant to be this, not what it used to be. And it wouldn't sit still in my heart till it was done. see, I had to mature as an artist to know what to do with it. I had to go through the making of Protocosmo, another painting, to find the solution for its dilemma. If I had not created that one appropriate art piece first, I could not do the previous one. I would never have found the solution to the Sphinx if I had not matured enough to be able to handle the complex Protocosmo painting. All the time, the Sphinx was waiting for this complexity from me. All the time, one action caused another. I fulfilled its destiny. I am totally convinced of this. No matter how unscientific it may sound, destiny is the inevitable.